Welcome to Caddy's tutorials on Revit 2012. We're just going to jump right into it. Uh, these are going to be different than other tutorials. We're just going to get you drawn as soon as possible, get you modeling. Um, not going to go into the backstory of Revit, not really going to get into what BIM is. I assume that you pretty much know all that by now and you've done your research and that's why you're using Revit right now. Um, I will just say real quick that Revit is not BIM. Revit is just a tool to achieve BIM. BIM, of course, being building information modeling. Um, and that's basically all I'm going to say about that. So let's just get straight into it. When you open up Revit 2012, this is what you're going to see. You've got your last four projects that you've opened. Now, if you're opening it for the first time, you probably just have the um, two tutorial projects that Revit comes with. But families, you have your last four families you've worked on. This is just a quick way to get to what you're working on currently. You can also come here and hit new, which will open up the default template, and it can be whatever you set it to be, your work template um, for your firm or the company you're working in. Right now, it's just a default template. But if you come over the application menu here and hit new project, you can actually create a template. That's how you would create your project templates. Or if you come here and browse, you'll see that Revit has preloaded some templates, commercial, construction, default, and residential. I just want you to be aware of those. Um, you can use those default templates if you'd like, but nine times out of ten, you're going to want to have your own office standards. So rather than having to redo them at the beginning of every project, you create a template. That way they're already done once and you don't have to spend time on it anymore. Um, just wanted to get into real quick. If you're used to AutoCAD, you're used to DWGs or drawings, Revit or projects. Um, a project is your building, your model. In Revit, you can link other things in, but just for these tutorials, let's just go with the fact that Revit is one project, one model for everything. Um, that's basic difference between AutoCAD. There's no layers. There's no command line. There's no XREFs. That's what makes Revit so great, in my opinion. You don't have to worry about, you know, red is going to plot a certain color. You don't have to worry about that stuff. It's already done. All your line weights are there, and you'll see that in a minute. So let's just go ahead and hit New. And that's just going to open up the default template. I'm going to show you a little bit about the user inter interface. Okay, right here you've got the ribbon. Pretty, pretty basic. You've got your panels here, different panels down here. These are your tabs. Go ahead and get familiar with the ribbon. This is where all, all your commands are going to be. Now you can set up keystrokes like AutoCAD, and we'll get that into that later. But for right now, let's just do that. Um, this up here is your quick access toolbar. And you can add any of these commands you want to the Quick Access Toolbar by simply hovering over it, right-clicking, add to Quick Access Toolbar, and there it is. And if you want to take it off, you right-click, and you remove. Very simple. So there's your ribbon and your Quick Access Toolbar. Um, one other thing I wanted to show you is if you do get into a command, let's just hit the wall command, you'll see right here some commands or some options come up. This is your option bar and you can preset some options here. Now anything that you miss, say if you wanted it to be 10 feet tall but you started drawing a wall, you can come over to the properties of the wall and, and still change it. So if you miss it here, it's not a big deal. You can change it later. That's just a little, you know, some pre-options that you can set. And also notice I've got a little green section here. Anything that's green is called a contextual tab. It is just for placing walls. That's the options that I have. If I was to come over here and hit door, I have a couple more different and I can tag it on placement and load families which we'll get into. But I just wanted to let you know that that will change colors to green and that's anything over here in the gray is your normal modify stuff and this just has to do with the command you're in. So there's your contextual tabs. I want to show you your properties palette. Now if you notice, I'll go ahead and go back to wall. This has some constraints that you can, or some parameters that you can pre, um, that you can change. These are your instance parameters. These will only change what you have selected, so just that one wall. If you see this right here, edit type, that is your type parameters or type properties. You can see it right there. So if I change something in here, and I can even go to edit, and if I hit preview and then go to a section, and this is going a little quick, but this is how you modify your walls. You can see right now it's just a single wall, and you can see right here it's a single wall one core. But just to show you, let me go ahead and this is my basic walls. All my wall types will be right here as I create them. These are just preloaded. Let's pick on this first one and then go back to edit type. 
and you can easily see, and we can zoom in there, that it's got a bunch of stuff. Let me go ahead and hit edit. You can see all the different layers that it has. That's what they're called in Revit layers, and you can scroll down. You can see it's got two finishes, thermal membrane, substrate. These are some sweeps in there. I mean, it's a pretty complicated wall. But I just wanted to show you. Now, if I change something in here, every wall that's called exterior brick and CMU and metal stud, if I was to, for instance, delete this finish. Oh, it's not going to let me delete it. But it would change that on every wall that's named that. So that's the difference between an instance parameter and a type parameter. The instance just changes that one instance. The type changes everything in that type. And that's going to be very important when you start creating families. So I just wanted to go over that with you. Um, study, study the ribbon and the options bar. And then also down here is your status bar. This kind of gives you some hints as to what Revit's expecting you to do next. Like right now it's telling me to click to enter the wall start point. And if I was to click, it'll tell me to enter the wall endpoint, and then it also tells me that the space bar flips orientation. It kind of tells me what it's expecting me to do. So I just wanted to show that to you. Study those three. Um, very important in Revit. So that's how you get things into your model, but where do you put them? Well, this down here is called your view, your view window. And you'll notice one of the big things about Revit, like I mentioned earlier, is what you see is what you get. So if I was to come here and draw a wall, I'm just going to draw a basic wall. And I'll zoom in on it. And I'm going to go ahead and go from coarse to medium view. And coarse is just, you can see the box right here. They line up. That's that box. It's coarse. That's just a quick view. If I go to medium, you'll see more detail on the layers. And you'll see that some of the layers are darker. Some of the line types are lighter. I don't have to worry about layers and colors and all that stuff that AutoCAD makes you worry about. It's in there. It's in the wall properties. And it can be modified. You can make it your own. Um, but for right now, it's just using out-of-the-box stuff. That's Revit doesn't worry about that stuff. It's a simple, it looks like a very simple user interface and it's done that way on purpose. It's, you don't have a lot of options up front, but all these walls, doors, windows, families, they're all very smart, they're all parametric, and that's what makes Revit a great program. So, you can also, just show you this real quick, if you ever wanted to see, there's a button up here called Thin Lines, and basically that just puts it everything into a thin line Sometimes when you're butting stuff up or aligning stuff, it's hard to really see when you have a bunch of thick lines going on on your screen. So you just hit the thin line command, it turns everything into thin lines, and you can draw on that command, no big deal. And you hit it again, and it goes back to the way it was. So you'll notice, I'm going to go ahead and delete this wall for now. And then we're going to go ahead and put in another wall real quick. So notice when I'm drawing a wall, I'll zoom in a little bit, you click just like in AutoCAD or any other program, you'll see that little blue line that's dashed in the very middle. And the reason it's in the very middle, because if you look up at my lo um, location line up here, it's on the wall center line. So that's where it's putting it. And you'll also know there's no ortho. It automatically tells you what degree you're turning the wall, and it will snap to 45s and 90s. And that's just default. You can set that up however you want it. And the other thing you'll notice is that little blue dimension. That is a temporary dimension. It can be edited after the wall has been placed or as you're placing it. So if I wanted that to be 30 feet, 30 feet. And notice that Revit is in feet. I just have to hit 30 enter. If I wanted 30 inches, I'd have to hit 30 and the inch mark. Or I could hit zero space 30, which is telling me zero feet, 30 inches. So, but you'll notice when I come down, I can draw a square, you know, rectangular building. I can go 20 feet. Oh, I hit 250. My bad. Fat fingered that. Just delete that real quick. And we'll draw another wall. And I'll do it right this time. 20 feet. Now notice when I come to the lined up with this wall, I'll be perpendicular to that wall because there's my, you know, it's snapped perpendicular. perpendicular. And when I get to the end, it's going to give me a, hor a vertical blue line right there. So now I know I'm already lined up, so I don't have to worry about aligning this stuff. That's how smart Revit is, and I can just come here and the walls clean up automatically, and there you go, those are my walls. Very simple. 
and I just wanted to show you real quick you can like I said that's at 30 feet right now whatever wall is highlighted I can click on that temporary dimension and make it 40 feet and it makes it 40 feet those are your temporary dimensions and you can set them to where they're gonna hit if I want it to be on the outside I can just drag it and hit tab and drag it and hit tab and it'll pick the outside wall it's not a big deal say I want it to be 30 feet those are your temporary dimensions so that's another difference between CAD and Revit. You don't really have to draw perfectly to get it into the model. You can easily manipulate it. So a lot of times if I'm doing a rectangular building, I'll just draw a quick rectangle with walls and then go through and just use my temporary dimensions and make it the right size. It's a lot quicker than trying to get it perfect the very first time. Uh, last thing I want to show you in this video is selections. Just like AutoCAD, if you're not familiar with it, you'll see if I go to the left, up or down it's dashed if I go to the right it's solid right is a crossing window it has to encompass whatever I'm trying to select 100 percent you can see that left wall it's not picking it until I totally get the entire wall inside there then it's just now picking that wall and that's it but I won't pick the top and bottom walls because they're not totally encompassed yet now they are so that's one method if you go to the left it's a crossing window so whatever it touches or crosses it's going to automatically select so there's a difference right there you can see it's already got those two walls all I have to do is touch that wall and it's going to select it just like AutoCAD but Revit has a third way to select I'm just going to run through this real fast because if you can't select stuff of course you can't modify anything if you'll notice I have not clicked on anything yet just hovering over it highlights a wall that is a pre-highlight so I can do that and of course select but what I can also do is if these walls are chained together, which they are, you can see they're all connected, I can highlight over one wall or object or anything, hit the tab key, and anything that's chained to it will automatically select. Then I select them and now they're all selected. So that's a tab select. Tab on it, boom, they're selected. So that's all I wanted to go over in the first video. I just wanted to kind of show you Revit, show you real quick what some of these things are. Um, one more thing I want to do show you before I leave is this project browser. This is the heart of Revit. This is how you get to all of your views. Remember, it's one model. So all your views are they're just different ways to view your model. That's all it is. So if you want to see level one, you've got level one. If you want to see level two, of course, there's nothing drawn on there now. Just level two. That's just showing level one underneath. If you want to see an elevation, you can click on your elevation, and there's your elevation. It's very simple. That's all that this is, it's just different ways to view your model. And you can draw different things in different views. Of course, most of the time, you'll be in a floor plan view. Um, you can also tile your views. Those are still open because I opened them. So you can go also go through and close each view if you want, or if you know you just want the floor plan view open, you can maximize it. And then you can come up here, and that is close all hidden windows. So all the views behind it are now closed. And you can tell by minimizing that's the only thing that was open. So that's just real quick, get around in Revit. Um, next we're going to start drawing. I'm just going to get you straight into drawing, that way you can start being productive. Like I said, this is going to be different than other videos. We're just going to get straight into the drawing aspects of Revit. There's a lot to learn. But we're going to get you up and running and doing your own projects as quick as possible. And that way you can start making money. So join me for the next tutorial. Let's start building a building and visit us at caddies.com. Thank you.